400 years ago, New York Harbor was home to the Lenape and one of the most dynamic and productive ecosystems on the planet, a thriving estuary built on one keystone species. The Lenape called it Sisawin. Our textbooks say Crassostria virginica, but you and I know it as the Eastern Oyster. I'm Pete Malinowski. Join me and our team at Billion Oyster Project for a look at New York City's forgotten hero. It all starts with food. Just a few centuries ago, New York City oysters were known and enjoyed around the world. We ate them all and transformed the landscape, filling the harbor with trash, sewage, and other pollution. This unparalleled urban estuary collapsed, and all that remained was a contaminated harbor that was missing its most important ecosystem. A flat, featureless landscape with nowhere to hide and nothing to eat that was increasingly vulnerable to the impacts of storms and waves. As New York City prepares for the growing threats of climate change, we can look to the past to rebuild our natural defenses to stronger storms and rising water levels. These challenges exist in every coastal city. Billion Oyster Project's effort to bring back New York's oysters could be a blueprint for letting nature lead in big cities across the world. Our oysters are not for eating. They have a more important job to do, but their journey to our reefs begins on the farm. Meet Liz and Steph, founders of Little Ram Oyster Farm. They grow the oysters that New Yorkers eat in restaurants. Farmed oysters are the most sustainable form of protein production on the planet. Whether they're floating in oyster bags on a farm or growing in clumps at a Billion Oyster Project reef site, oysters provide the same benefits wherever they grow. They provide food and habitat for hundreds of other species, they filter the water, and they can protect our increasingly vulnerable shorelines. Our favorite part about oyster farming is the environmental impact that we have each day. So every single oyster on our 10 acres is filtering 50 gallons of water a day. And you do the math, we're growing 2 million a year. And that's after growing 2 million the year before. And so we have a massive overlap. There's probably at least 4 million oysters on our farm right now. That's a lot of work that's happening without any of us doing anything on a minute to minute basis. And so us knowing that and being able to contribute to the environment that way, that, that's our favorite part about oyster farming on a day-to-day. -day. Soon after harvesting, oysters reach restaurants and wind up on happy hour half shells. Those shells are rich in calcium carbonate, the perfect substrate for a new generation of oysters to settle on and grow. Here's Carrie Heffernan, executive chef at Graham Banks and one of dozens of chefs working with us. He brings a love for seafood and a willingness to share our mission with everyday New Yorkers. For the past five years, we've been partnering with Billion Oyster Project and reclaiming a lot of our shells. And it is incredibly impactful, as we know, to the, the bottom environment. But it's also a great story for us to share with our staff and to engage guests with. Um, I, I love the idea of the change we're bringing to you know once productive New York Harbor and understanding you know the life cycle of these animals and what they do. When I see the kids from the Harbor School sort of coming through the city and I see their sweatshirts, I feel a sense of community and I feel this like, wow, there is hope for the next generation. There is, there is an opportunity to do something and contribute. With the help of the lobster place, thousands of pounds of shell are transported to Governor's Island, cured in large mounds called middens, and cleaned before being placed in reef building structures by passionate volunteers. After that manual work, these shells are reef ready. Their dense, pearly surface offers oyster larvae a place to land and grow. Those restaurant shells are then submerged in retrofitted shipping containers filled with harbor water before millions of free swimming larvae are introduced to find their permanent home. Finally, the oysters are added to the harbor and a waterfront access point is created. This is where our concrete jungle meets a vibrant world under the surface. Community scientists, local organizations, and students of all ages join us to measure oyster growth, monitor conditions, and witness renewed nature in our estuary and around the city. All cities experience a push and pull between nature and development. We can't rewrite the history that turned the Lenape's Manhattan into the New York City we know today, but we can use this knowledge to reframe our future. 
we can teach each other about the native species and the natural processes that thrived in our neighborhoods before we did. We are so disconnected from the life that's hanging on around us, but we've already come so far since New Yorkers decided to do something about it. We may be the first large-scale oyster restoration effort in an urban estuary, but there are thousands of estuaries. I'm hopeful that oysters and the ecosystems they engineer will thrive here once again. Every city in the world stands to benefit from working together to restore the lost keystone species that used to thrive. Imagine what we can achieve collectively here and around the globe. As they say, if you can make it happen here, you can make it happen anywhere. <laughs>